Recently, LEGO Education released the Spike app version 3. This long-awaited update offers some of the biggest changes to the Spike Prime robotics experience so far. So what is new, what has changed, and what has been removed? Let's find out. G'day, I'm Mr. Code. Now, when you go to the LEGO Education software page, there is a warning about upgrading to Spike App version 3. First of all, all programs that were written in version 2 are no longer compatible with version 3. And secondly, Python programming is not yet available in this version, so it is coming in a later update. If you are using projects written in version 2 or in Python, then avoid the upgrade or download the legacy app instead. I want to add a third note here as well. If you update your Spike Hub to version 3, you can't easily downgrade back to version 2. In the past, when you connect the hub to a computer with a different version of Spike, uh, it will automatically update the hub to the computer's version. With version 3, the only way to downgrade is to use the uh, LEGO Hub downgrade tool. So I'll leave a link in the description, but basically it is a bit of a hassle, so don't upgrade until you're sure you're ready for it. Now the first thing I wanted to test is this much publicized new Bluetooth connection experience. I think the best way to do that is to do a little bit of a test. So uh, I have on my table a uh, our LEGO robot. I'm going to set up a bit of a timer here as well and then i am going to try to connect with my spike prime app so here on my spike prime app i'll get it started up uh, don't show this again we are going to test with spike app version 3 in a moment we're going to use spike app version 2 first you can see up at the top here we're using 2.0.9 uh, just to see what the before and after results are. Okay, so let's go create a new project into word blocks. All right, and uh, as soon as I uh, hit the connection button, I'm going to, whoa, everybody's giving me messages. I'm going to hit the start button. Okay, so ready, set, Go, all right, so here I am going into my connect. Here's my Bluetooth, I'm gonna hit my, my little Bluetooth button. Uh, and actually I don't remember which, which robot I need to connect to. Uh, it doesn't actually show which robot I am using, so it's not CA30. Oh, Mr. Code, this one, okay. Well, this one's still still rolling at the moment, so I just need to wait until it stops clicking along. This is probably not the ideal situation, but you can see how there is a, a little bit of a delay anyway uh, when you're trying to connect. Okay, this is going to time out very soon, I think. Okay, there we are. Oh, what? Everything's disconnected. I'm going to try connecting with this one. No? Huh, it's a bit strange. So, can I connect with this one? So I'm still trying to connect. You can see here, my Bluetooth button is flashing, but it's not able to connect for some reason. So, I'm going to just close out of that and try, try this again. I think it was Mystic Code, this one. No. All right, it's connected now. Oh, finally. Oh, I'm going to press the stop button on my stopwatch. And you can see here, it took me about a minute 30. Um, if I had uh, known exactly what my name of my hub was called, I probably would have been able to connect quicker, maybe a minute earlier. But let's see what the experience is like now that we have downloaded version 3. Okay, so um, one thing to notice is that with the, uh, the new app, the, um, the light is green instead of white. Uh, it's flashing orange right now because it's starting to run low on battery. But um, 
let's uh, have a look at our connection experience. So here we have our app. Uh, as soon as I hit the connect button, I'm going to uh, hit start on my stopwatch. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, so we're going to hit connect. Uh, yep, it's showing green. Hit that. Uh, turn on Bluetooth, okay. Well, as soon as I hit Bluetooth, Raphael pops up. I just hit connect. Ah, oh, all done. Very, very quick, successfully connected. You see that? So uh, that was about 16 seconds, 16, 17 seconds, much quicker than uh, version 209. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with this and it makes it more stable and more consistent when you are in a classroom environment as well. Another welcome update is the faster program switching and running speed. All the little clicks and beeps of the hub have been removed in favor of a snappier interface and program startup. So let me demonstrate what it's like with version 2 first. Okay, so here uh, with my version 2 app, I'm going to uh, make it simply uh, move forward for a little bit. Okay, as soon as I press the button, you're going to notice that the in version two, our robot makes a few beeps and clicks before it even runs the program. So here, I'm going to press the play button. Okay, so there was a little bit of a beep and a click. I'll try it again. All right, now let's see what it's like in version three. So when I go into um, our app, go back to the project, going to put in my motors and then move forward for 10 centimeters again. All right, as soon as I press play, uh, we're going to see uh, how we have got rid of the, the beeps and clicks of the, uh, of the app. All right, so it's much more snappy it doesn't, it doesn't make any clicks anymore, even when I'm pressing uh, the button to, um, to navigate between, between the um, different programs. There's no longer any animation, which is, which is nice uh, because it means that if you're in a competition environment, then you're not going to have to wait till these animations go and uh, save some of those precious seconds. So here, back in the zero position, I press go. The app just starts. Okay, no more beeps and clicks. And you know what's even better than seeing your program start up quickly? Getting notifications right on time as soon as I post a new Spike Prime video. If this video helps you out in any way, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to support my channel. Let's see what else has changed in Spike App 3. So if I um, go into the Spike App and uh, add all of our uh, extensions, and then here we have in our steering move, uh, we have removed the centimeters and inches, uh, which is kind of strange. Uh, I would have thought that centimeters and inches could have stayed in here as well, but you can get around that. So all I do is check out my ro motor rotation. So it's 17.5. And then uh, I can keep using this move for your steering angle and keep it at rotations. But instead of plugging in the number of rotations, if you want to move in centimeters, and we know that uh, every wheel rotation is 17.5 centimeters, then we can go and divide however many centimeters you want by 17.5. Okay, so if I want to move 10 centimeters, I just put 10 here. So 10 divided by 17.5 rotations is the amount of centimeters that you want to move. If you want to uh, move in inches, then you would do the same thing. But instead of uh, doing your inches over here, you would have to convert your uh, inches, uh, your centimeters to inches. So here we go into our movement. And if one rotation was say four inches, so four inches, yeah, if one inch, uh, uh, one rotation was four inches, then you would put 
over here in your uh, then you would put over here inside your input say I want to go for the, uh, four inches so I'll go four divided by four rotations or if I wanted to move three inches I'd go uh, three divided by four inches yeah so that's how you would have to work it out but it is a little bit strange that uh, the inches and centimeters have been removed from the steering block. Let's see what else has been changed. Inside events, there is a new when timer event. So if you go over here, you can see when timer is greater than 10. That's a really, really big help because in the past, you might have to um, go and use an if statement or a when uh, or a wait until block. So in the past, you'd have to go wait until um, a timer is greater than however many seconds, so let's say 10 seconds, and then you'd have to put in the timer block like that. But now there is a actual event for that. So that saves you from having to construct these uh, timer wait until blocks, which is kind of nice. If you uh, keep going down to our sensors, you'll see that there's no longer a loudness uh, sensor. Uh, which I guess is okay because we don't use it very often, but it is still strange that it has been removed. Maybe it will be added back in a future update. Everything else seems to be the same except for in more motors and more movement. So in more motors, the run for at speed has been removed. Uh, and also the stall detection has been removed and inside more movement pretty much all the blocks have been removed except for these uh, uh, start at speed block using the tank move uh, and also the brake and acceleration modes. Everything else has been removed from more movement. Uh, I suspect uh, it's because they were not as popular, uh, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Maybe it will be re-added back in uh, in a future update. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, More Educational. Ever since Creator Academy started making LEGO education videos, we have been greatly supported by the experts and more educational. They're an authorized partner of LEGO education with over 20 years experience working with LEGO education products. So if you're in Australia and you want to buy genuine LEGO education products like the ones shown in this video, then make sure you visit the more educational website. That's it from me today. What do you think of Spike app version three? Make sure you leave your comments in the comments section below. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.